it's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I'm excited to be with you today, as I always am, because I actually have a person in front of me that I had on the podcast a while back. And for some of you that remember when the pandemic hit, things went crazy, we all went virtual, and I had a chance to connect with an individual named Doug Riverman Allen. And Doug Allen is the owner of Jose's Bar and Grill, right up on 412. And uh, that's in Springdale, right? It's actually Tawny Town. It is Tawny yep. Town. Okay. All Springdale right. so, zip code. It's Springdale enough. zip code. Right. Close enough. Yeah. So, but uh, anyway, Doug, Doug is well known. They've, they've got one of the best brunches, if not the best brunch in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, the food is amazing. Great salsa, the whole nine yards. But Doug is just a salt of the earth guy. He's a local, he's a native from Northwest Arkansas. And when I first came to reach out to him, we, the episode was episode 63 and we talked about don't give up, right? And it was just at the height of the pandemic, things had just started really hitting the fan and there was a lot of uncertainty. And his episode was was a very powerful episode of momentum for a lot of people. And we got a lot of feedback. It was one of our most listened to episodes. And so, you know, we said, let's bring this guy back on. And to top to top things off, he wrote a book and it during the pandemic. So you know, he decided that he, he wasn't busy enough trying to keep his restaurant afloat. Right. I'm going to write a book too. So without further ado, I want to welcome Doug Riverman Allen to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast for a second time. How are you doing? Thank you for having me again. It's uh, it's an honor, I tell you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, man, I, I'm so good. I'm so glad that you're here. For anybody that didn't listen to episode 63, I would love for you just to give us the quick cliff note version of who Doug Riverman Allen is. Sure. You know, I own Jose's. I've owned Jose's for about 18 years. And when I, you know, our last podcast with you, we talked about, uh, you know, the pandemic of when they shut down restaurants and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we had to, we had to flip our restaurant to a grocery store and get creative and sell sanitizer and, and bulk grocery items and masks and all that kind of meat. (laughs) Meat. Yep. I bought meat from you and I got sanitizer and meat. What's, what's, that's a crazy combination. Exactly. So, So, uh, you know, we flipped it into a grocery store and, you know, we, uh, we didn't give up and it, uh, you know, it saved my business. It helped out the community and I'm still here, uh, running Jose's and, and, What's that was in 2020? Has it already yeah, been? I know, you know it's two years, two years, two solid know. years. So, and so yeah, it, it was crazy, but we made it work and we did not give up. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I certainly applaud you. And, 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 you know, the one thing that I will take away is because we follow each other on Facebook and you always had a lot of uh, encouraging words. And, and, you know, I think your, your overall message was just keep going, you know, keep going. Don't, you know, don't stop, like kind of like Dory and, um, in uh, in that 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 fish movie from um, Pixar, and I'm th- I'm bl- I'm blinking on the name now, but it's like keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming, and 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 you know don't give up. Yeah, basically. exactly. So. You know, it felt like I was swimming against the current. That's for sure. You know, there was a lot of obstacles. You know, from lack of employees to you know the bills are still coming in. Uh, you know, trouble getting certain types of products and right. stuff like that. So it definitely felt like I was swimming against the stream. Yeah. For sure. So okay. So with that in mind, so for everybody listening, you you picture that as the backdrop. You wake up one day and say, you know what? That's not enough. I need to write a book right now. Yeah. What? You don't. <laughs> it, I mean, it sounds crazy, but uh, you know, I make tacos for a living. But the river is my passion. Right. That's why they call you River Man. When, yeah. when Gary Head told me about you and he was like, yeah, you need to talk to Doug Allen. And then I realized how we were connected anyway, for just a little bit of backstory. Both of our kids swam on the Aqua Hogs at the same time. And his son and daughter, for a while, we kind of all carpooled together. There were a couple of families because he doesn't live far from me over on the east side of Fayetteville. And we all carpooled together, but I did not know you. I knew your wife. And but 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 more more importantly, I knew your kids because I was driving them back and forth. My wife was, and we were all sharing. And so 
it, I thought it was interesting, but you know, you are just like, Hey, you know, you are the, the river man. I mean, that's just, that's your thing. Yeah. You know, it's just, uh, like I said, you know, make the tacos for a living, but I love the King's river. I grew up on the river. So, you know, during the pandemic, I had, uh, I had talked to some friends. I think we may, may have even had a few beers and they said, Doug, gosh, you, you know, everything about the King's river, you should write a book about it. And I was like, Oh yeah, you know, I'll just write a book about it, you know? And, uh, What's that saying? Uh, write a book, they said. It'll be easy, they said. <laughs> it was far from easy. I think it was one of the hardest things, you know, I've ever done. Yeah. Um, there was many times, you know, I got fired up in the beginning and I would write and I'd ha- I'd outline and, and I'd get all excited. And then there was other days I just got really upset with it, got mad at it, threw, yeah. it, in, the, threw it in the drawer and <laughs> didn't pick it up for another couple months. And uh, so, you know, writing a book is just not, you know, it was not easy, but, you know, it was something I knew a lot about. So, you know, I was passionate about it. I got myself organized. Fortunately, I had some great English teachers growing up. I don't know <laughs> if they'd ever thought that I would write a book, but, you know, I actually took some of what they were teaching me and, and, you know, I I was able to put this thing together. That's awesome. So now what is it about, and I know for people listening to this, a lot of people have heard of the Buffalo River. Right. Let's orient folks to where the Kings River is in Northwest Arkansas. Sure. Because you're originally from Eureka Springs, I'm originally from Eureka Springs. So uh, within a five mile radius here in Northwest Arkansas, and that's the beauty about living in Northwest Arkansas, within a five mile radius up in the Boston Mountains, You've got these wonderful rivers. You got the Kings River. You got the Mulberry River. You got the White River. Um, you got the Buffalo River. So you've got all these wonderful rivers starting in the same mountain range right here in Northwest Arkansas. So, you know, what a wonderful place to live that you can access all these streams. They're all floatable, fishable. Of course, everybody knows about the Buffalo River. Right. So, you know, some of the lesser known rivers, such as the the Mulberry or the Kings, uh, not a whole lot of people know about. Uh, yeah. A lot of people know about the White River because, you know, it's a chain through the lakes. And, yep. and uh, but you have these uh, extraordinary resource water bodies just right out our back door in Northwest Arkansas. So how similar are the ecosystems of each of the rivers? Do like, do you see commonalities between the Kings River and the Mulberry and the White River versus the Buffalo or, or are they each like kind of their own unique River. Um, there is a lot of similarities in all of them. Obviously, the White River was dammed uh, in the Flood Restoration Acts, uh, I don't know, 50 some odd years ago. Okay. So you've got a series of dams which release very cold water. So you get trout streams. Yep. And the Kings River, the Mulberry, the Buffalo, they're kind of uh, what I consider a warm water stream where you'll get more of like uh, smallmouth bass uh, type fishing. In those type of streams. So there's a lot of similarities, uh, you know, kind of except for the white, which, like I said, is, you know, it runs through all the way down, you know, into the Arkansas River where it's, you know, it's trout, it's cold water. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And now, does the White River run, run through like Cotter in some of those areas? It does. It does. Yes. Okay. That's it what does. I thought. Cause I know Cotter is big on trout fishing out there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And I've, I've fished many times in Cotter and it's a uh, trout capital of the world, as a matter of fact. Is it so really? I went out to Colorado and uh, I, I went into a fly shop and I said, hey, where, where do I need to find some? trophy trout. And the guy said, you need to go to Mountain Home, Arkansas. <laughs> I, I just kind of looked at him. I was like, oh, that's, that's, I'm already from there. He goes, yeah. that's where the best trout fishing is. Really? So, you know, so you got all these wonderful rivers and trout streams and smallmouth streams. And once again, right out your back door in Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people realize that. No, I don't. I, I don't think so either. I mean, people are starting to discover it. Uh, obviously, there's more and more people moving to Northwest Arkansas you know, on a weekly basis, but they need to check these things out. Absolutely. Yeah. What wonderful resources we have. Man. So what was it for you? I mean, growing up in Eureka, I mean, that's a beautiful area for anybody that has not listening to this. If you haven't been to Eureka, you need to check it out. It is a great, you need to spend a day or two there. There are great restaurants, great stores. I I have a couple of stores that I go to that are just in Eureka that I prefer. I mean, I really love. So, you know, I, I, I would encourage folks to check it out, but You know, growing up in Eureka, you were in the great outdoors and I mean, you were just exposed to it. So what really scratched that itch for you when you were younger and how, you know, was it, I know for me, I was a scout person. I was boys, Cub Scout, Weeblo, 
Boy Scout. And uh, my Scout Masters were kind of really introduced me to the great outdoors along with a former neighbor, Mr. Scott, may he rest in peace. And that's how I got, you know, what, what was it for you? Well, you know, my, uh, I come from a family of uh, biologists. My, you know, my, my dad was a microbiologist. My uncle was a marine biologist. Um, you know, we had always been around some body of water, fishing, lake, river. I mean, you name it. So we were big outdoorsmen, but mainly we gravitated toward water. So, you know, as a young child, my uh, dad wanted to move to Eureka Springs. You know, he, he drove through there, stopped at the Kings River, fell in love with it. And all of a sudden we moved there. So my very, very first memory of being on the Kings River, and it, it gives me goosebumps thinking about <laughs> it, was um, my dad had parked somewhere on the river near what's called Kills Creek. Mm-hmm. And uh, he decided he was going to take his fishing, fishing pole and a bucket of crawdads that he and mom had caught. And he was going to walk down the river a little ways and catch a few bass. So I think I was four or five years old at the time. I may have been a little bit younger, actually. So. I looked at my dad and said, man, this is cool dude with a fishing pole. And, and he had this bucket of crawdads and they were, you know, it was cool just looking at the crawdads. So right. I started following him down the river. My mom didn't see it. And uh, my dad, of course, didn't know I was following him. And I stepped off into a deep hole. Ooh. And uh, and it still gives me goosebumps thinking about it. And I can still close my eyes and envision the ripples of the water in the minnows slowly, you know, swimming in front of my eyes as I was in this deep water hole, yeah. which I thought was deep. It was only four or five deep, but right. I was only a few feet tall. But, That's a lot for a little But kid. I was drowning. Yeah. I was I was drowning. So I just remember the calmness of it and watching the ripples and the beauty of the water and the fish, you know, then slowly everything started to get dark. And the next thing I know, I was on top of his truck, you know, and he was trying to get every bit of water out of every orifice in my body, I think, while mom is over there, you know, give him the what for. for right, right. For not watching his son and, uh, and make him nearly drown. So oh my goodness. Uh, that was my first experience of the Kings River. And I've had a attachment to that river ever since. Wow. So, you know, that wasn't, you know, as a youngster, that wasn't the only time that that we would go to the river. It was a regular basis. Every two, three days, we would grab our buckets and fishing poles and catch crawdads. My mom was, she was the, she had to be the world's best barehanded crawdad catcher I've really? ever seen. She would see a crawdad, <laughs> turn over a rock, snatch that sucker and, and put it in a bucket. And, you know, we would, uh, we'd have a great time. And, you know, I didn't grow up with a whole lot of money. So, you know, we actually fished out of that river, you know, to put food on our table. Yeah. So, uh, you know, not only was it a recreational resource, but we depended on that for uh, food on the table. You probably weren't the only family. Probably not. There's yeah. a, there's a, there's a lot of people that have used the Kings river for that same reason. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a funny, I'm strictly catch and release now when sure. I go fishing sure. or I take people. We were so poor growing up one time we had to eat fish out of that river for a month straight. I kid you not. Really? So we had a 50 pound bag of potatoes and we ate smallmouth bass and Ozark <laughs> bass Cooked every way imaginable. Long year, every way imaginable. What was the favorite recipe? Oh, it was just fried. It was okay, cornmeal okay. and fried. That was it. You know? yeah. and that was Keep it. Kept it simple. Kept it simple. And, and uh, I was so tired of fish, Randy. <laughs> I told myself, I said, if I ever make it one day, I am never going to eat another fish out of this river ever again. Yeah. And I have never eaten one since. Really? Once I made it, I just that was I decided it. I wasn't going to do so it. So true story, I'm strictly catch and release. Okay. Okay. But, uh, you know, the Kings River, it's it's just has such an impact on my family and just, uh, you know, my everyday life around Eureka Springs and even today as I live in Fayetteville. So I still have, I have a, actually have a place over on the Kings River. Okay. It's very ironic. It's directly opposite of where I almost drowned as a kid. Really? So it's, you know, it's, so it's a subtle reminder for so you. It's a subtle reminder. So it's just, <laughs> it's kind of odd that, you know, that I, that I have a small cabin over there and on that river at that exact same spot. But yeah. It's, uh, you know, when I'm not making tacos at the restaurant, I promise you I'm on that river somewhere. Somewhere. Okay. Yeah. And you know, and it's so, one of the things that you do that I, I really respect you for is that you give back to young people that sometimes aren't exposed to the river the way you were at your at that age, right? right? And so you have a program called the Riverman School for Kids, and I know for the past couple of years, for you know, twice a year, you would take kids out to the river, teach them how to fish, 
show them, you know, the whole process so that they can not only learn how to fish, but also appreciate nature. And I mean, so could you talk just a little bit about that? And what was your inspiration for that specifically? Sure. You know, it was during, you know, during the first part of the pandemic and these kids had nothing to do, nowhere to go. You know, I think the camps were closed and travel was restricted and all that kind of stuff. So I just put a, put a camp together, you know, at my place on the river and invited 10 kids to come fish. And it, it didn't matter if they had any experience or not. So, uh, a lot of the kids have never held a fishing pole. They've never felt the tug of a fish. They've never caught a crawdad, a helgramite. They've never seen for minnows. They've never experienced that. So, <laughs> so you know, I had some sponsorship. I had some people that gave me some fishing poles. So the kids got to take home a fishing pole and a, a bag of lures and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, they come over. We talk about the river. We talk about how to take care of the river. Sure. We talk about what's in the river. You know, then we go for a hike. You know, it's not not just... It's not easy going fishing, you know, sometimes you got to walk. So yeah. I make sure they walk at least a half mile to get where we're going. You know, then we stop, we grab our buckets, catch crawdads. You know, we hang crawdads from our ear. It's called an Ozark earring. <laughs> so we have fun with that. You know, we, we, we catch helgramites, which are a menacing, you know, they look like a centipede with big old kind of, uh, uh, pinchers on the front. Yeah. I, I've so seen the kids, yeah, the kids, uh, you know, they, uh, overcome their fears holding that kind of stuff. And then after that's said and done, we walk another two, 300 yards and then we go fishing. We, we, uh, put the bait on the hooks and then we catch smallmouth and long ear and Ozark bass. And these kids just, you, sh- you should see the, the look on their face when they catch a f- fish or they feel the tug on the line for the first time. Listen, it's unbelievable. Not, there, yeah. It's hard to describe. I mean, I'm a big fisherman and I, I, primarily cut my teeth fishing in a reservoir as well as also fishing off of an area there in Washington, D.C. that my grandfather used to take me to. And then I went deep sea fishing, but it's indescribable to say how it feels when you get that first nibble on the on the line and you're just like, oh, you're, you know, you start to pull back and you get excited and it's, there's just nothing like Oh, yeah. Like it, you so. know, it's, you know, they're hooked, you know, pun intended. But right. Once they catch that fish, they just, you know, they squeal with joy. They just... They want to do it again and again. I've had uh, kids come back two or three years, right? You know, now to the school because it's so much fun and they learn something new every time. Yeah. So this sounds like this is going to be ongoing. You're not going to. I'll probably continue to do that. Um, okay. I really enjoy the kids. Um, sometimes it's like herding cats, you yeah. know. So all you teachers out there, man, much respect to y'all. <laughs> oh, because mad respect to the teachers. mad respect yeah, to the teachers. So that's but, for sure. Uh, but for the most part, it's uh, it's pretty rewarding to share something that's so important to me, uh, yeah. to those kids. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the book, The Riverman's Guide to the King's River. It's about 103, 104 pages. There's a lot of information. There's pictures, there's maps. Can you maybe walk us through just a little bit about the process that it took to create this book? Sure. You know, uh, like I said, it wasn't it wasn't an easy thing to do. So I, I came up with the outline. I didn't want a book that was just a very dry guidebook. I wanted something with some history. You know, I knew a lot of history about the Kings River. I had stories of my childhood that I wanted to add in there. I didn't want the book to be dry. I wanted people to be able to to get their information out of the book, but I wanted to capture their attention and, and, and make them feel like they were on the river when they were reading the book. Yeah. So I put a bunch of stories in there in my childhood, the one I just told you about drowning, <laughs> There's a story about a, a snake in there, but I also wanted to honor the people that were important to that river before me, you know, such as uh, J.D. Fletcher, Joe Head, Bud Stoppel, you know, all those people were, you know, if you were on the river at one time or another, you're probably going to run into those people and they were legends of the King's River. So I wanted to give stories about them. Describe those uh, characters to the people and then, uh, you know, hold their attention with the book instead of just being something dry with the here's the King's River. Go here to put in here's right. the fish you catch. You <laughs> yeah. know, so I had seen those guidebooks and I didn't want it to be that. So, you know, that was a little harder probably for me to put together, uh, you know, with all those stories and that other stuff. So, you know, it did take me. Gosh, it took me a couple of years to put this thing together because, yeah. like I said, I got mad at it. I threw it in the drawer, you know, <laughs> and then, you know, I have finally found someone that was very instrumental, Angela Belford, in helping me put everything together. Okay. So that was very instrumental. And I want to thank her for sure of helping me get this book together. So I was able to piece it all together and have something really, really special. Yeah. 
You know, it's funny I because I actually have a book coach right now and I was telling you that uh, I'm working on a book myself and it's tough and I've constantly been reminded and I've told other people this, we all have a book in us. Whether we choose to write one or not is a whole nother story. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yep. we, we all have stories to tell and, you know, I can only imagine, I mean, I, I read some of the stories that you had in here and it was just, you know, you, you kind of bring the King's River alive through your experience. And I think that's important because we all have experiences and there are great stories that each one of us has to tell. And so I think this is a, this book is a great example. I, mean, I think a lot of people might find inspiration, not just on how to fish the King's River, but also in how to take your story and, and, and immortalize it on paper. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's awesome. Well, what's next for Doug Riverman Allen when it comes to, to the King's River? What are, you, what are you hoping to accomplish? And I might add that I know like the Buffalo River just celebrated, what, 50 years? Correct. It's the 50th anniversary. We just had them on from the foundation. We had those folks on the podcast a couple of months ago, and that was, that was really successful because they're doing some really amazing things there on the Buffalo River. So what's next for the King's River? You know, um, not another book, although I might do a, you know, a second edition or I might do a, a coffee table book with some nice photographs. But I think as far as writing, you know, any other book about the Kings, I think that's it. You know, a dream of mine is to actually have some type of outfitter and uh, have more kid camps and, and uh, educational facilities and mm-hmm. stuff like that located not by the Kings River. Sure. So I kind of have that on the horizon, working on that a little bit. You know, it's still important that I, uh, you know, make a lot of tacos so I can afford to, <laughs> to chase this dream. Yeah, but, yeah, you absolutely. Know, that's probably next on the horizon is just figure out how to uh, do, you know, take people up and down the river and, and teach them a little bit. And uh, if we educate, we can conserve. So we got to we got to teach people how to take care of the river so it'll be around for for your kids and their grandkids. So, you know, that's very important to me, you know, especially with the amount of people that are moving into Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. I mean, everybody's going to find out about the Mulberry, the Kings, the, <laughs> the white, you know, obviously the Buffalo and the white. So yeah. we got to teach them, you know, how to take care of our rivers for yeah. sure. So that, that each successive generation can really appreciate it. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So. so how long is the Kings river? It's over 90 miles. Okay. All right. As a matter of fact, and it's a North flowing river that okay. runs into Table Rock Lake, which okay. is an absolutely wonderful lake to fish in, swim in, recreational. But yeah, so it's a northward uh, flowing river. Okay. Free flowing right. river. Free flowing. Fact. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it's from a, like a canoeing, a kayaking perspective as it compares to like the buffalo. Is there a fair amount of action on the river? Oh, sure. You know, there's uh, there's different sections of the river that are easy to get to. Some are harder. Up, up the uh, headwaters of the Kings River, there's the Kings River Falls which is absolutely stunning. It's an easy hike to get to. Not a whole lot of floating up there, but uh, down by the marble access, there's these huge bluffs, which you'll see on the cover of the book, that are just absolutely stunning. Yeah. And I think they rival those bluffs of the buffalo. Buffalo, yeah. So, and as you get to what I consider the middle part of the Kings, it comes becomes more riparian, slows down a little bit. There's the trees and the fields and, you know, the farmers on each side of the river. And then, of course, down at the end, you know, it widens out and becomes the uh, Table Rock Lake. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got you. Man, so there's so much to take in with that river. Well, I mean, this is, I really appreciate you, you know, kind of sharing your insider's guide to the the Kings River. And um, I think that people listening to this will find some real value in terms of those of you that want to go out and kayak or canoe or fish the Kings River, you need to check out the River Man's Guide to the Kings River. Is I'm assuming this book is available everywhere for the most part. It is. Um, okay. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it on uh, www.kingsriverarkansas.com. Okay. Uh, there's a couple local places that carry it. Pack Rat in Fayetteville, Pearl's Book on the square and also Collier's uh, carries the book as well. If oh, the drugstore. Yep. Okay, the drug cool, store. cool. So yeah. it's, uh, it's starting to get out there a little bit. Uh, that's my next goal is to, uh, to hit up some other places. But uh, in the meantime, you can definitely find it in the Fayetteville area or online. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. Doug Riverman Allen, the author of The Riverman's Guide to the Kings River and the owner of Jose's Bar and Grill on 412 there in Tawny Town, and definitely one of the best brunches that you'll find in Northwest Arkansas. I really want to encourage you to check it out, whether you go and have a taco 
or you decide to get out on the King's River and you buy his book as a guide for your time out there, you will not be disappointed. Doug, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, there you have it, folks. Another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. To subscribe to this podcast, you can check us out on all of the great platforms that exist like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You can subscribe to the podcast. You can rate and review the podcast right there. Let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, our podcast comes out every Monday, rain or shine. So we'd love for you to connect with us and learn a little bit more about Northwest Arkansas from the perspective of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life right here in the Ozarks. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I will see you here next week. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.